Yes, indeed. Two idiots are reading the SCP files over the intercom. Please stand by and await further instructions. Record ready! Hi guys, it's me, Tad. <laughs> Welcome back to the sky. Record ready! <laughs> Audio on! Video synced! Video synced! Microphone? Call me, guys! Like slipping over each other! Is it like yeah. and stuff? Headphones snapped on! <laughs> hey, you don't think you can start without me? Zooms into the distance. It's the SCP. <laughs> Welcome Someone? back to Disco Welcome back to I hope this isn't your first fucking episode of Discover SCP. Me too. By the way, I'm sorry, all the dog, who... I'm sorry dog, I'm sorry dog, I ran over his tail. Oh, I'm it's sorry. Uh, this is a rough fucking roller coaster. Don't put your tail Jesus right up to my chair. Also, um to all the people who are like, oh Dardella is she thinks she's not a dupe to SCP, I'd like to inform you that this is uh, so there <laughs> There are people in my real life now who just think of me as the SCP guy. Like I was, wow. I was in my regular role play group the other day. Uh, regular was, role play, <laughs> not possible. And and my friend was making a reference to like the chicken SCP, and he was like, "Huh, huh, Kurt?" And I was like, "Yep, yep, that's an SCP." <laughs> chicken <laughs> SCP? What do you mean? The one that's like it has the eggs that can't be destroyed. And it oh like yeah, runs yeah. Around. Fucking <laughs> like breaking mad the chicken man. I don't know what you would refer to it as. It was like the weird humanoid chickens. It's called uh, Los Pollos Hermanos. <laughs> Please, have another bite, Walt. <laughs> that is famous <laughs> line. Famous <laughs> line, <laughs> God says. <laughs> Please, Please, have another bite, Walt. bucket of chicken wings. <laughs> have another bite. <laughs> his catchphrase. <laughs> he's like, got a gun his, to his head, he's like, have another bite. <laughs> Fuck, I want the thumbnail this week to just be Gus pushing, like, a, a bucket of chicken wings, like, here, have another bite, Walt. <laughs> have another bite. I don't know why that was that's so the... fucking funny. That's also the name of the episode. Have another... I, I will call it Have Another Bite, Walt. <laughs> what was that even... Well, we, we're talking about SCP. I was, I, 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 so far we managed to say welcome to Discovering SCP, and I couldn't even oh, yeah, say news. it yet. Okay. News? news oh, we got news? The se- the 7,000 contest is almost over, I think, so if you haven't read or voted... Citation that, needed. I'm in... I, is it already over? I don't know. <laughs> I might be looking at it. Oh, well, I mean, it's been a month. It's this be guy's a- got his finger more on the pulse of the SCP community right now than I do. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I, it's just, uh, apparently, if you're, like, a content creator, you have to say something about 7,000. So, okay, like, what go, do you think go, about it? obviously, read... I, I mean, I haven't read any of them yet, but what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I also haven't read any of them. It's just like, I, mean, I don't know. I'm, Maybe, I'm, I'm, all right. if you're lucky, I'll read some of them when this contest's over. Yeah, that could be fun. But only if you're lucky, of course. <laughs> so playful. Um, uh, also, not necessarily SCP related, but I don't know if you heard, Tam, but D&D kind of announced... Or I did, I heard, like, what's it called? Like, true D&D or whatever? D&D, it's called D&D 1. D&D 1, holy shit, it's like Battlefield And, and basically... One. They're no longer making new additions, but they're going to start doing a whole bunch of rule changes. And are you familiar with Unearthed Arcana? I'm not, no. Tell me about it. Unearthed Arcana is like D&D would put out like, okay, here's a new class idea we have. You, It's not technically, uh, like you can't use it in the, in like the, the main like games that like their people run. Like it's not technically canon to this rules, but you can test it out. And we're seeing how it plays, right? Right. So that's basically how they're treating D&D. Is like, here's a bunch of rule changes you can or can't use. And then we're going to take feedback. And from here on out, just incorporate things into the already existing 5th edition framework. We're no longer going to make like 6E, 7E, etc. So it's all just going to be an ongoing process based on live feedback. Gaming is a service. Smile. Yeah. And and they're gonna do like uh, I think remastered versions of the original three books like the well, about the graphics. Can make better graphics. <laughs> better graphics, Graham fix. Those books are very pretty if you've ever read them. Lots of nice pictures. Um, Imagine you're in a D and D session. You look at your like DM and you're like, this session's going a bit slow. I'm gonna change the graphic settings and you turn that fucking oh, no, into polygons. That's a, that's a thing now, Tan. Okay. So what do you mean that's a thing? I mean, I can, like, transfer you into a little CDI link? Yes, 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 yes. What do you mean, yes? So, 
let me explain. So, um, I haven't read fully the details on how it works, but basically D and D is working on something with their D and D Beyond platform. You know where you can like buy and read the books online and digital okay. and all that, and keep track character sheets. Where they're gonna they're using Unreal Engine to make it so you can like CGI like have your characters and like maps and kind of play it like a video game with people for like a finally D and D is good. <laughs> Finally. It's they couldn't even really afford fun. graphics before. This is so big for them. <laughs> yeah, it went from a, a play-by-text Went from game. a one-star game to, like, nine stars out of 13. Imagine the future 30 years in when you're, like, hang on, I'm jacking in, and you put on your helmet with <laughs> fucking VR. You fool! DVD you put the USB stick it upside down and your brain stems fried. <laughs> <laughs> he died thinking oh. he was an elf. Dude, I can't wait to fucking VR into my D&D games. Oh my god. Ja- it's I'll like, like jack it off. <laughs> Geriatric as fuck. I'm jacking in and then I'm jacking off. <laughs> we still have not finished saying to- welcome to Discover SCP. Uh, welcome to Discover SCP. How this is the new format you? where we just do what we want. You're 122 yeah. episodes in. You're, you're here for this, let's be honest. Alright, how many, how many, how many? One! And in fact, our analysis is a very special one, because I'm going to disclose some behind-the-scenes behind the factoid. We tried to read this one before, and we fu- I fucked it up. Because I wasn't recording. Really? Yeah, Was th- this I'm, Autopopadopolis? Yeah, remember I said I, we're going to wait until we forget what, <laughs> what's in it, and then try again. So I remember very little of Autopopadopolis. <laughs> plan works. Cactuses. What? It works, my plan works then. Yeah, I remember very little. It was like, I know it was like an ancient city in the sky, and a cactus wrote it, and that's about it. That's Let's find out what's going on with the demon Lancelot and the flying city of Autopopolis. You know, we should do it more like, because I'm, I'm always doing like really boring, like, this one's called the Plum Bowl. It's by George Spoony. I should like be like a TV George announcer, Spoonie! like, now let's find out what's going on with the Plum Bowl. <laughs> by your favorite Behind guy. door two, Plum <laughs> Win by George Spoonie. The Blombo by George Spoonie. Well, uh, but here it is. Here's the SCP. Tanhoney, our new fucking meta should be opening a Patreon, and then patrons can put in the SCPs they want for a round. Every $10 you round. donate, we'll get one second further into the actual SCP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, 4840. 48-40. <clears throat> Ooh, well, look at this fancy ass. I almost yeah, uh, we said the exact right. same thing the first time. The exact same thing, I just said. That's how you know it's authentic. Let's get into it. Project. Yeah, by the way, there's two pictures here. One is like, it looks like a ancient Greek city in the clouds, and then the other one is like uh, an aerial satellite image with a little honed in... So let me get this straight. I'm somewhere I wouldn't call Site 19. I'm seeing flying <laughs> frickin' cities. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh. I'm talking to a freaking <laughs> cactus. <laughs> oh, I love that. Did you see the one someone did for Bloodborne? It's like, I'm somewhere I would not call Britain. <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, like, on the bridge to the claret, but he's like, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> discover an SCP, <laughs> try to discover an SCP challenge. Is is there a word for like that type of fucking like writing? Like Whedon. Whedon-esque? Yeah. This fucker, he's the one who did it. Oh man. He's the one to blame. But let's get into it. Let's read an SCP. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, read. Item number SCP. 4840, level 4 secrets. Containment class Kreta. Description class Etchy. Risk class no dice. <laughs> Etchy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, the pictures, as previously described, it's pronounced Etchy, actually. Bad. Special um, contain okay. procedures. Due to the mobile nature of the SCP, it is currently impossible to contain the structure to a single location. Foundation and assets on board the SCP to monitor weather conditions and the mechanisms that propel it in order to maintain its presence in the set area of exclusion. Currently a region roughly 120 kilometers... Oh, square. That's that far as a footnote in the Russian Arctic Circle. Coordination of these efforts from the express purview of the SCP containment head, Alyosha Yanovich, and the current Applied Task Force RU 199 Siberian Squad's leader. Foundation assets are to seed local meteorological phenomenon. So, basically, they can't lock it down, so they use, like, 
bullshit weather machines to kind of keep it in a general area. Yeah. Does this imply that this thing, like, floats with the wind? <laughs> like, a, like a really big breath? It's like a feather. Hmm. It's just so beautiful, you know? Sometimes you, you can't see it. If your heart was weighed against a feather, would you? Would it be lighter or heavier? Um, lighter because of all my good deeds. <laughs> <laughs> like it starts like going the wrong way. I just like Anubis looks at me. I like, shake my head and I put my finger down on the feather one. Anubis is like that tracks. That tracks. <laughs> it's like four it down. It's like you can't do that. He's actually done so many good deeds. He's allowed to be smug about it. He gets a freebie. <laughs> Foundation assets to seed local meteorological phenomenon to encourage a thick cloud cover surrounding the SCP. In the event that this is not possible, or that the cloud cover clears and the SCP becomes visible, onboard cloud generators reactivate until such a time that the weather conditions become favourable for natural cloud creation. ATF Rule 199 is monitored local populations for sightings of the SCP. Individuals who claim to have seen the SCP is reminded to cite 210 for processing. Containment teams are to monitor the SCP-B entity for any signs of activity. To date, this entity has remained inert. Due to information gathered from Dash A and its relation to other anomalous phenomena, this document has been classified level 4, 4840, with restrictions. <coughs> Access to this document is limited to senior staff members assigned to SCP-2254, SCP Blimbo, SCP Blanco, and SCP-4812. Due to potential interference by members of the Insurgency Reborn group of interests, Report pending. Access to this document is possible only through authorised terminals. What are we thinking so far? I, I, of course you've never read this before, so you have no idea what, what it's about. But so, what do you think? So I remember enough... What do you mean you remember? Like, it's the first time like, you're reading this. A is like the guy, right? That just like, no, he's the exposition He's guy. not the guy. I'm the guy. Hey, you're not that guy. Oh. Maybe next time you can be. Um, but yeah, I don't remember what B is if we learned, and we didn't get all the way through, so most of it's still obscured for me, but I am curious to see where this goes. I mean, it was written by Cactus, so I have high expectations. This guy, this article. always a banger, always a good time with Cactus. <clears throat> We've got updated containment memorandum, per Foundation Protocol 2513.99. The ongoing containment of the SCP has been transferred to the jurisdiction of Project Paragon. All other excellent containment procedures remain in place. Oh, crazy. Paddy, don't bark at me. He's back, by the way. The dog is back. <clears throat> I, thought, I, thought, I thought he was gone now. Yeah, he's I back he'd now. Freed. Paddy. They went on a holiday and a week later, so I have him again. <laughs> you know, everyone's going like, bro, where the fuck am I? I'm in fucking... A great Britain, and it's not too great, every, let me tell you. Every day I'm like, why don't you come visit slash move down here? I would love to see you. And every day you're like, oh, well, there's too much going on. You think I would go to a... Your, everyone else in your household is fucking off. Constantly. Globe trotting. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Paddy. Oh, well, I'm going to have to remove him from the premises before I play football. Football? <laughs> what? Kick him oh, across right, the room. Hold on. <laughs> I think that's the first time we had the British American sports mix up since we've known each other. <coughs> okay, I'm back. I was just saying, I think since the first time we've known each other, that's the first time we've had a legit like British American sports mix up where you said football and I thought you meant my football, but you meant soccer. I meant to, I was going to punch him across the room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not throw him to someone else. But it's the same result, I guess. Suppose so. Description. Classic sports metaphor. I can still hear him through the fucking walls. SCP-4840 is a large footnote. Roughly 5.45 kilometers in diameter. Ancient abandoned city, footnoting roughly 7.8 kilometers uh, above an empty region in the Russian Arctic. Footnote that says, despite the height at which the SCP rests, persons within the city's boundaries experience temperature and oxygen density like they would at sea level. The architecture of the city suggests that, while the city appears to predate any known civilization, it was constructed using advanced techniques and materials, including several components, such as gas lamps, that would not be seen elsewhere in the world for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Sorry, I almost That's transformed. Weird, I also... 
I got heartburn like the same time you made that noise. <laughs> I, I think, I think they were resetting lost. the real life. <laughs> they were resetting the real life servers. That <laughs> was the beast blood of Yarnum <laughs> transforming me. <laughs> SCP-4840 bears markings identified as a long, dead human language, seemingly a precursor language to ancient Greek and other Mediter Mediterranean tongues, one that does not appear in any ancient settlements anywhere else on Earth. Through deciphering the text, Foundation linguists, so these cunning linguists, have determined that at one point it is his Hold on, what did you say? Some cunning linguists, what do you mean? Oh, I thought you said a different one. Oh my god, did you think I that? It was unintentional, uh, I assure you. <laughs> it was SCP-4840 was called Autopapadopoulos, which roughly translates to City of the First Father. Dark Souls DLC-ass name. It really is, now that you mention it, City of the First Father. <laughs> Scholar of the First Sin. Information <laughs> gathered from within the SCP indicates that it was once a city of 100,000 occupants, though there is no direct evidence of any single event that led to its decline. Based on information gathered from the single living occupant of SCP-4840, which is Dash A, see Addendum 3 for more info, the population of the SCP simply left over an extended period of time following the loss of its first and only leader. The SCP-4840, whether by natural factors or some kind of anomalous influence, disappeared entirely from the human social consciousness afterwards. The SCP is divided into four quadrants, with a large central hub connecting them. Quadrants appear to be divided based on the craft of the population occupying them blacksmiths and metallurgists, engineers and designers, farmers and bakers, and artisans and craftsmen. Each That's of the some fucking Rimworld-ass <laughs> city planning. <laughs> Each of the four quadrants has its own local centre of governance near the central section. The central hub contains three large stone temples, temples of sunrise, sunset, and night, respectively, with iron ornamentsure, as well as a larger, more ornately designed great hall that was likely used as the seat of power. The second of the temples, the Temple of Sunset, is in ruins caused by the entity laying across it, SCP-B. I guess it's safe to assume B is like some sort of great beast of some kind. <laughs> Welcome to Laidle, or whatever it's fucking called in Elden Ring. <laughs> Laindle? Yeah, Laindle. <laughs> what the fuck is Laidle? <laughs> Laindle's the capital, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I have the castle of the big dragon. Classic. Beneath this hall is a chamber with a large stone door accessible only to Dash A. Individuals who attempt to pass the, fre pash, pass the threshold of the doorway when the door is open describe a building tension that overcomes their bodies when trying to pass into the chamber beyond. This tension is described as an increasingly uncomfortable guilt and regret, the intensity of which is enough to incapacitate anyone who approaches the threshold. I is get that, that going to my basement. Hmm? <laughs> is because that where of they hold all of it? What do you mean all of it? <laughs> Jesus' guilt? Because he took on all the sin? Oh, well, there it is. I found it. He took it and he put it over here. Give it back. <laughs> my sin, I need it. <laughs> Give me back my sin. Now that's a fucking oh my God. story. Can I, I block, like so evil. can I blaspheme briefly? Yeah, go ahead. Imagine I was at the crucifixion and I'm watching it and I'm like, um, sin please. <laughs> I was going to say, that'd be such a good like gamer like or media concept. Like a guy who's so evil, he wants to f kill Jesus to take back his sin because he misses it. That's, that's so mine. He used to fight through, like, legions of angels, it's like, like an opposite of Devil May Cry. <laughs> like, all the biblical figures and bosses, like, Noah comes to try and stop you. I think I might just be describing Ultra Kill, but Ultra Kill's blood instead of sin. This sensation is often accompanied by panic and anxiety, and can only be relieved by moving away from the doorway. It's currently unknown what exactly lies beyond this entryway. See Addendum 3 for more details. Looks like we have an idea. Prior to night, saying see addendum three for details. What the where the fuck is addendum three? I assume we have to one and two. Prior to nineteen thirty three, I thought it was nineteen ninety three when <laughs> once every three was say, moved. Site nineteen. When Tanhoney was born. I wasn't born in nineteen ninety three. You were born in nineteen ninety five, right? I am. Yeah, I'm glad you remembered. As if forty eight forty was hidden from view and perception by unknown anomalous means. Dash A contends that this was due to its own influence on the structure. I did it smile. However, due to an apparent change in that individual condition, the SCP has rendered, been rendered visible to the naked eye and to radar equipment. The installation of scrambling devices, cloud cover generators, and the movement of the SCP to remote location has helped mitigate this change in behaviour. The SCP is abandoned except for two entities, Dash A and Dash B. 
Dash A is an elderly male human of nondescript build and uncertain ethnicity. Genetic testing of Dash A has revealed likely Mesopotamian ancestry, though the genetic markers present with the individual have no apparent pre-ancestral linkage. This suggests that Dash A is either an alien being on Earth, or contains genetic material that was the precursor of intelligent human beings on the planet. Dash A speaks many languages, including English, Mandarin, Russian, Valerian, French, and Spanish. So many. Valerian. <laughs> yeah. Did you, see, did you see that fucking Reddit post? I did, yeah. Wedding in Valerian. <laughs> this guy went to it. <laughs> He knew. And we have another image here. This is me when you find the evidence. Same. <laughs> I know, that, that look. It kind of looks like... Like, um... What are those things from Banjo-Kazooie? You know what I'm talking about? Little, like, fairy guys? No, I played it. You never played Banjo-Kazooie? Uh, I don't remember their names. He looks, I only like, play like good games, like... Uh, I don't fucking you just know. made, like, one 30 to 40-year-old guy really upset. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Kirk Hope. <laughs> Poor guy. Dash A is capable of controlling the general movement of the SCP. Additionally, Dash A appears to have a degree of limited local omniscience, being able to describe events taking place far away that we have no, intre- no knowledge of otherwise, though it cannot describe specifics or individuals involved in most cases. Does it know what I'm doing right now? Dash A is also the only individual. Didn't it just say, can I describe specifics or individuals, you idiot? I'm not an individual, I'm a phenomenon. <laughs> I'm an organization. <laughs> I'm a movement. Hashtag resist. Dash A is also the only individual capable of entering the sealed structure beneath SCP-4840's Great Hall, which Dash A calls the Old Library. Additional details concerning the structure listed later in this document. We'll definitely be going after the going there after we beat the boss of this area. This is a, this is a very long article. Yeah, this guy can play. He's not even reading it. I'm reading it. Perhaps you should read faster. We're popcorn it to me. <laughs> Don't worry. When we get to the boxes, that is your realm. <laughs> Don't worry at all. All right, you got this. The only other entity located on the SCP is Dash B, a massive, vaguely humanoid entity that lies unmoving in the ruins of the Temple of Sunsets. This entity, roughly 12.8 meters in height, is only visible using thermal lenses. Dash B serves no sign of movement and is described by Dash A as being dead, but continues to output a constant, unchanging amount of heat. Dash B has a human torso ending in six legs and six severely distended arms, each of which ends in a rough metal clasp that is fixed to a chain connecting to a large iron flail at its end. Dash B also contains markings consistent with those found on SCP-2254, which appear to be some kind of sign or sigil. This sigil... Two, two, five, four. Uh, I don't think we've read that one, but um, we'll get to it someday. Someday sounds awful lot like never. This sigil bears many you, similarities... You did the whole bit yourself. Yeah. You didn't even need me for that. <laughs> I'm sla- We're practicing phasing you out. <laughs> Solo podcast. Yeah, I just do... But when, I won't change like the format. I'll just like do both roles. Nice. You'll be a great Darnell. Thank you. This sigil bears many similarities to those discovered during excavation of other pre antediluvian sites, specifically those concerning SCP Blank, the Royal House of Apollyon. Um, quick, can you remind it's me still not right written this means... one. Sorry? Um, oh, sorry. Basically, anti-diluv- pre antediluvian means pre flood, basically. Like the great Noah flood. Oh, yeah, because they use it all the time in um, Darkest Dungeon. I was like, mm-hmm. antediluvian. I still hear that fucking dog through the walls. I might be going insane. Isn't it? Maybe there isn't even a I dog. I can't hear it. I'm There's no dog. Show up on the recording. <laughs> There's no dog. I've just asked lost to it. Edit it. But I can't. Yeah, I can't. It's like quote the fucking raven. Stuff. You fucking. You're, you're like breaking up all the rooms. You're like smashing an axe into the wall, <laughs> and your family comes open. They're like, "Tanoni, Tanoni, what's wrong?" And you're like, "Fucking." I look, and they all have dog faces. <laughs> Who's Patty? Ah. <laughs> Dash 1, Discovery. Uh, there's no Dash 1, it's Addendum 1. <laughs> SCP-4840 was first discovered by... Beep! Uh, man, Sir George Danson in September of 1933. While flying from... I'm... Sorry to interrupt, I just thought of a great SCP. It's so evil. Tell me. So it's a dog, right? And it's a dog that... It, it, it finds a family and, like, you know, does the whole, oh, I'm a cute dog, take care of me thing. Mm. And then two weeks later, it finds a way to fake its own death to make everyone sad. And then after they, like, put, like bury it or what have you, it just gets back up and goes to the next family. <laughs> it's, evil it's not even that evil. It's just so mean. <laughs> it's just... He just likes to make people sad. 
<laughs> I like it. He always reconstitutes himself afterwards. <laughs> While fleeing from London to Oslo. Due to limitations of aircraft at the time, it would have been impossible for Dan to actually describe the SCP. Definitely oh, I mean, three kilometers higher than he would have been flying. Leading many to speculate that the city was much closer to the ground at that point, perhaps 4.5 to 5 kilometers. When reports of oh, you were reading the footnote. I was like, I was so lost. I was like, where the fuck? That was just my that? commentary. Well, reports of a flying city of the North Sea were made public. The Foundation and the Royal Conservancy for Public Perception were able to disseminate information contradictory to Johnson's claims, instead alleging that he was drunk and hallucinating at altitude. <laughs> oh my god, Trolled. that's the next fit. Fa- the next phase of SCP is like fucking authors putting like a commentary track you can listen to alongside their notes. <laughs> so that. yeah, this is what uh, this was a Tannity line, right, Tannity? Uh, this was a this was a U line, sure. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there were like eighteen of us working on this. The, the right is room. <laughs> <laughs> First contact with the SCP was made when a crew of Foundation researchers, led by Captain Francis Pike, approached SC- the SCP by hot air balloon. Upon arrival, they were met by Beche. No official transcript of this conversation was ever recorded, but Pike described the event in an exploration journal, saying... What did he say, Donna? <clears throat> As we approached, we could see the whole of the city laid out before us. A marvel, like Rome on a high hill. Why is he sound like that? When we got, cl- <laughs> when we got closer, because he's old-timey, right? He was in a okay. fucking high <laughs> hill. Old-timey, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we got closer, we saw the truth of it. The city had been abandoned for some time. With the morning dew and sunshine turn the stone streets and towers to sparkle, the midday sun revealed its empty and decrepit state. Not entirely empty, however. When we landed, we were met by one man, perhaps seventy years of age or more, who welcomed us, the city. Um, I think you mean to the city, uh, Cactus. Maybe try again next time. Calls Adapapadopolis, I believe is the spelling, uh, Adapapadopolis by speech. He introduced himself as the city's steward and showed us to his chambers. We walked down the promenade as wide and regal as any or elsewhere in Europe. I know, but he was British, so he pronounced his words wrong. I'm British. Yeah, and <laughs> I pronounced it right. You were the worst. That's the worst defense. Well, I just said it right, though, is what I mean. I just said promenade. I know it's promenade. I was saying it because he's British. And but I'm British. British people pronounce things. Right. I know how to fucking do it. Never mind. You're pissing me off. No, not really. I'm, I'm joking. I, I, I have to say you're joking. Here in understanding, where this is two aliens trying to communicate. <laughs> oh, where was I? Um, you were talking about promenade. Down the promenade. As wide and regal as any in London or elsewhere in Europe, and saw the richness of this place. Abandoned though it was, the finery of construction was unmatched in any city I've seen in my entire life, even London, England. We passed by one structure, a temple made of orange and blue lacquered stone that was a ruin. I asked the old man what had happened here, and he told me that answers would come in time. I had a strange and uncanny feeling looking at that place, but we pushed on towards the Grand Hall at the center of the city and dined there. It was a simple meal, but hearty, and the old man expressed his appreciation of some Siegbrow. <laughs> what? Siegbrow. Have some. Siegbrow mail. This guy doesn't even remember. Dark Souls phrase messed up. Say the word again that you're saying. Siegbrow. from GS3. This guy messed up. Help me! It's been a while. Help me out. Remember your friend? On your night, he gives you a drink. He gives you someone who's Siegbrow. His name's not Siegbrow. Yeah, but he gives you Siegbrow. Oh. I see. <laughs> I'm awkward. Um, Can I keep reading set, now? Please? Uh, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> the onion knight. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I, someone made a note of this I didn't even think about that both Dark Souls and uh, Game of Thrones have an onion night fantastic then what if they teamed up <laughs> oh, the gods would fall um, that's fitting too because the guy didn't like gods very much in uh, Game of Thrones all comes together um, <clears throat> totally forgot where it was 
We, we explained briefly what the Foundation is, and he told us he already knew and had known for some time. He said that there are old secrets kept in the city that must be made safe. When the old man speaks, he speaks as a friend. I cannot place why. It is strange, I would tell you. I have known him my whole life. His presence feels as if he is a close companion whose company I have missed dearly. As the sun was setting on the day he showed us the long since abandoned rooms we could rest in. They are splendid and clean, much larger than those the old man sleeps in. Clean. This is exactly how our first meeting went. I was like, why, do, why am I being brainwashed into thinking I've known him my whole life? <laughs> Over a third of my life. <laughs> yeah, and you were All astounded right. by how clean my audio was. God, this is so... Oh my God, this is so long. Well, we'll popcorn the boxes. Because I won't. I know the rule is that the boxes are your realm, but I can't do that to you. No, it's just, I am not strong enough for all these boxes. <laughs> Addendum two: imagery and iconography within the SCP. I can fuck it. When well, much of the SCP bears markings in the standard symbology of the city of Ordopopadopolis, the exceptions to this theme are the three temples in the city center and the structure beneath the grand hall. Much of the imagery decorating these structures seems to refer to events from history, groups, and persons of interest, and other anomalies. Is this like the Akashic Records, this place, where it just holds all the information? This, this dude's got a fucking, the library, he knows all the things that are happening in the world. This is some Akashic Records sound in this shit. Well, let's find out. The Temple of Sunrise. In the entryway to the main hall, two naked children stand at a tree line, seemingly nervously watching the horizon. A wolf and bear stand behind them protectively. On the wall opposite this mural, a figure with a flaming sword is seen standing on a hill overlooking the trees. Oh, is that? That's Gate Guardian. I don't even need yeah. to click that link. I know that's Gate Guardian. It's the Garden of Eden. Nice. Or as people on our Discord call him, the Gate Guardian. <laughs> well, pride, am I right? I don't know what that oh, yeah. fucking means. <laughs> I don't know what that means either, but I'm sure someone will like it. The main hall is decorated with three murals. On the far wall, far wall, far wall is a brilliant sunrise. Far wall. Far wall and seven years ago. The SC SCP is visible in the foreground. He's not even getting, this fucking dog's not getting bored, it's been non-stop. Standing in front of the sunrise is a golden man and two others by his side, with a third set off from the rest. The man holds a long rod <laughs> with a silver point and wears a shining crown. In the sky above them is a bronze dragon with green eyes. Words are written on the dragon's side, reading, They will know what it is. No, they will know what is. <laughs> Words are written on the dragon's side, reading, You I, I know like I had to do it to, to him. Be... <laughs> I was going to say, I love how like these are probably like ancient like murals of prophecies or history or myth or whatever, but I love the idea that they're like, really big political cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> on the eastern they wall is a scene of a meeting in the Great Hall of Ordopopadopolis. One meeting goer is suggesting an idea, but the boss looks angry. He throws him out the window. <laughs> Classic meme. No, that's not what it says. What it says, the golden man from the largest mural stands at the foot of a throne, while the two other figures standing to with the two other figures standing to each side of him. The third figure is absent in this image. Before the golden man is a king in crimson robes with a flaming crown. Extending uh, I'm gonna guess fencher. that's the Scarlet King. Right, correct Amando. Beside him is a naked woman covered by a snake. Not really naked, then she's wearing a snake. That's, um, I'm gonna guess that's something to do with the serpent's hand, but I don't that's know. That's Lilith, you fool. Have we read that one? No. <laughs> so there's no way you could have known. A man made of metal. And a sorcerer in deep purple robes. Uh, oh, I don't oh. recognize either of those. So I believe those are the Broken God and Dr. Wondertainment. The Broken God one leads to a link called The Builder. Yeah. Other figures stand nearby. Is this, like, is this like the fucking god hand of Autopopadopolis? <laughs> I guess. On the western wall is the golden man sitting on the throne in the great hall. Above his head hovers an iron crown. It is inlaid with words of an unknown language and set with a shining white jewel. Is the iron crown something we've read? Uh, I don't think so. Behind the golden man are several large monolithic figures. One made of gears and steel. One made of flesh and blood. One made of ice and stone, one made of stars, and another made of eyes. A young woman with eyes. long, brilliant white hair hangs in the air before them, pointing south. So, I, I feel like this is referencing like a bunch of things we don't know yet. We know some of them. That I haven't read. 
What is what is the eyes one? What's the that's the um, antimimetic god. Is the eyes? That's what it links to. The big starfish. I don't remember the starfish. And um, I think we did read that one. This one is the like big lady in outer space that points at things that threaten Earth. I think. Oh yeah, we read that. Um, it was like a, one of the Spanish ones we read, right? Because it was originally an ES article. Yeah. The southern wall does not contain a mural, just the words, for not the sea to swallow them, and the long, dark approach, printed in mosaic tile. Nice. Now I pass it to you. Temple of Sunset. What's this, fucking Zelda? Now I want to play Legend of Zelda 5. <laughs> just that jingle was enough. Temple of Sunset. <clears throat> Like the Temple of Sunrise, the Temple of Sunset has a large entryway leading into the main hall of the temple. The entryway contains detailed drawings of cities and towns in and around 4840. <laughs> Sorry, Fleming. As well as a map of the city itself. 4840 is depicted as having large walls and smaller towns and villages surrounding the exterior of the city. To the east is a river with another town on it, and farms stretching far to the north and south along the river. The words, oh, you know what I'm going to guess? Mm -hmm. I bet, because it's very clear based on what we know, is that this thing used to be on the ground, right? Right. I bet that body that's still generating heat, but that what's-his-face said is dead, I bet if it ever returns to the earth, it would, like, get back up, so that's why it's in the sky, to, like, keep it from returning to the earth. That's my guess, locking that in. The words, the lands of men, are emblazoned over the top of this mural on the side of the same bronze dragon as depicted in the Temple of Sunrise. A stylized arrow points to the southeast with the words, lands of the blood kings and necromancers. Uh, have we read 140? Um, yeah, it's the Davites. Oh, I like them. Written across it. This is just fucking... See, this is what happens anytime there's an article with like a million crosslinks. You have to be like, have we read that one yet? To Dan, every two seconds. <laughs> Another arrow points west with words reading, The Far Strange West. Me talking interior about the colonies. <laughs> the colonies. The interior of the main hall is similar in structure to the Temple of Sunset. However, due to the fallen body of SCP-4840-B-B, much of the main hall has been destroyed. A single remaining mural is visible, as is the western edge of another. <clears throat> the remaining mural shows the golden man with the iron crown sitting atop a white horse. Legions of men and women with swords, bows, and axes stand behind him. To either side of him are two figures, likely the same figures from the murals in the Temple of Sunset. One of the figures holds a black sword and the other a green rod. The golden man holds a long silver lance in his right hand. Is that Galad? Um, I don't know. We'll find out. Acro across from the Golden Man is a scene of gathering storm clouds and lightning, which grows more dramatic the closer it gets to the collapsed wall. Or Lancelot, maybe. That would make more sense, Lance. Uh, at the corner of the wall are depictions of small humanoid figures, light green in coloration with brilliantly colored clothing. The figures each have six eyes and two vertical columns. The remaining wall contains more of the small green figures, as well as something large and mottled gray behind them though most of the wall containing the subject of that mural is collapsed. The ceiling of the structure appears to have been painted to match the night sky, though much of it is collapsed and the remaining stars do not match any known constellations in the modern sky. What they do to the goddamn stars? What they do to my fucking stars? <sighs> temple of Night. The Temple of Night is the smallest of the three temples, set on the far side of the central courtyard, across from the Grand Hall. It is only a single level, but covers much more area than the others. Exactly, it's not the size, it's how you use it. <laughs> Information gathered from Pache nice. <laughs> suggests there are portions... This is a sex podcast now. This is a uh, adult... Discovering SCP After Hours. <laughs> this ain't your grandma's podcast. <laughs> I'm killed. Information gathered from Dashe suggests that there are portions <laughs> of the temple that run into the ground beneath the city, and may even interact with the structure located beneath the Grand Hall. The entryway of the temple contains depictions of entities barely visible against the dark background of a forest at night. These entities have bright yellow eyes and appear to be covered in hair. The werewolves! Though their faces are noticeably human. No, just kidding, it's a thousand. No, not werewolves. Okay, worse. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. <laughs> Where Bigfoot? That was a good question. 
So we know, we're familiar with werewolves, but we also know there are things like were birds, were fish. There's like were everything, right? Yeah. What's stopping were big for in like a DMD setting? Nothing. I'm pretty sure. I'm almost certain if I went on Drive Through RPG, there's probably a one shot titled that. That someone wrote up. You know what it would be really cool? What? Were human that bites animals to make them into humans and then captures them to to do work for free. Interesting. I'm going to have to pop up just for a second, um, if you'll just entertain these guests. With, uh, what? I'll have to be gone for just a second. I'll be right back. I cannot get over Patty. I can't hear a thing, but it might be all over the recording. Maybe poor Anomalous will be working overtime on this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Where humans? Think about it. They make things humans... And then, and then, like they they uh, enslave them to do their bidding. That'd be like the ultimate villain. It's like turning nature into industrialization. I'm sure there's something thematic you could do with that. Um, very silly idea. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, Aetheral Space. I asked Tan some info about that. Uh, so I'm gonna save that for when we do the reading. So there's also like, extra fun and the fun facts this week. Oh, welcome back. Hello, hello. Uh, what did you what? do to Patty? No, I thought he. Uh, I thought he shot on the floor, but he didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. False uh, alarm, guys. Patty did not shit the floor. The interior of the temple is a maze of small, interconnected rooms. The purpose. Oh, he started barking again, though. The purpose of these rooms are unknown, but many of them show the same depiction of a massive tree in the middle of a forest. Red lights surround the base of the tree, and humanoid figures appear to be hanging from the limbs. In the centre of the tree is a large red organ visible through openings in the bark. Towering structures of wood and stone surround the tree, each wrapped in thick vines bursting with large blood red blooms. Other depictions. Oh, that's some like Dragon Guard X Berserk shit. I kind of yeah. fuck with that visual. This guy pretended he's played Dragon Guard. I haven't, but that doesn't mean I can't recognize the aesthetic. Okay. This guy couldn't even finish near. <laughs> Other depictions include men and women being thrown into mass graves, children and animals being burned, men being placed into wooden copies and buried alive, skeletons strapped to trees, hang in there, skeleton, and small green humanoids being butchered by the longer, larger, long-haired humanoids. The most central room of the temple contains a staircase that descends beneath the structure. The chamber, as well as the rest of the temple, is dimly lit by an unknown light source. Long stone sarcophagi line the walls. Individuals entering this big report, a, a report feeling a sense of incredible unease, which is fantastic, and described hearing scratching sounds from within the sarcophagi. Access to the stairwell beneath the temple is blocked due to rubble and falling rock, like quickly from the same incident that caused the collapse of the Temple of Sunsets. <laughs> Me slow clapping for the burglar in my house. Wow, just an incredible sense of unease. <laughs> Truly, <laughs> done a bang up job, sir. During investigation of the Temple of Night, one exploratory team reported finding a room marked with the Foundation Focus Seal, and upon opening it was able to enter what appeared to be an abandoned Foundation site identified as Site 000000. Further exploration of the Temple have been unable to locate this room. On several occasions, Dash A has mentioned that he is not the only person within the SCP, and that there is another in the Temple of Night. Dash A has seemed to have looked into say anything else about whoever this individual might be and notably has never been seen entering the Temple of Night for any reason. Oh, creepy. Here. Now you read about right. Tell me about the sealed chamber. <clears throat> sealed chamber. What would happen if you... St- you know that guy who, like, disaster follows wherever he goes? Yeah. What would happen if you dropped him on this floating island? <laughs> Nothing good. <laughs> I don't know why he would do that. <laughs> for comedy? <laughs> He's like... The sealed old chamber. man's like, please... This was a beautiful place. What have you done? Why have you brought him here? <laughs> Sorry. I'm trolling you. For the lulls. <laughs> Sealed chamber. The Grand Hall of Autopapadopoulos bears much of the same iconography and imagery as the Temple of Sunrise. According to Dash A, the two structures were cut from the same stone. But the sealed chamber beneath it does not. The small antechamber containing the sealed door is featureless, except for a depiction of two figures on the door itself. The figure on the left is composed of a single vertical shaft of ornately decorated gold and silver, with a smooth white stone set in its center. The figure on the right is not a figure at all, instead being an inset of the same figure on the other door. 
The door on the left is made of white marble with bronze hinges and gold fixtures, while the door on the right is bound in rusted iron. When opened, individuals in the antechamber claim to be able to hear someone speaking with their own voice from somewhere beyond the door. Who could that be? something we've read? I don't think so. 4840-A has described the doorway as a passageway like any other, one between this place and somewhere else. Unlike others, it is old and its steps are well tread. The light of the world has long since left that place, and mortal men can no longer walk it. Interesting. So this is a very strange the, scene. There's, like, there's some weird going on. The hell's going on here? Uh, I don't even know what could be happening here, Donna. Luckily, I however... I see an interview log, but I see a lot of the SCP talking and a very little of the doctor. I was going to say, and... a lot of the signs we've been getting hinted throughout this is that we're going to find our answers in an addendum free. So I'm excited to find out what can happen next. Hold on a second. There's someone at the door. A lot of exposition. Oh no. Who is it? I'm walking over to the door. Can you hear me? Are you asking Cactus if he's free? Oh, it's you. The next time. (laughs) Wait, what? I'm joking. We're not. not, There's not enough for a part two. Let's get into it. (laughs) I was about to be like. What the fuck? Some 1730-ass shit. <laughs> Addendum 3. Interview. Now, this is a very important choice we have to make here. Um, listen. I feel like we Give should sell this best... through a game of chance. You... Yeah, I agree. Have you ever heard of Knuckle Bones? That's no. Different. I'm trying to think of a game we can play with our voices. Um... I can't think of any that would be good in an audio format. If we, I wish this was live because then we could have the audience decide who has the funnier voice, and then they have to be <laughs> the guy that talks a lot. Listen, I see. Can I maybe flip a coin? But would you trust that my flip is real? I, I would not. What if I showed you it? Right, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, what are you gonna okay, do? Show me it. Okay, I'll, I'll do the Google coin flip, and I'll, I'll like stream it to you, <laughs> so you can ascertain <laughs> that it is real. But in reality, it's like a gif I've made. <laughs> Anomalous, do the Google coin flip until it lands on the result Tanhoney gets to sync up with the video. Can you see my Google coin flip? Not yet. No, I can. Oh, you okay. Heads or tails? I call heads. I call tails. I've got another choice, but... You're the SCP fucker. (laughs) Alright, fair is fair. Okay. (laughs) Interview. The first recorded interview with Dash A was conducted in September of 1949 by Foundation researcher Dr. Val Ostrovich. I just got like a gambler's high. I'm, I'm a gambling addict now. In the years between the S and Kaiji. <laughs> We're looking at that coin like, Sawa, Sawa. I'm betting my max! It's only natural. <laughs> you're like, much. it lands on tails. You're like, oh, like your face is melting. Where's, where's the April Space arc where the crew has to play Kaiji esque games? <laughs> In the years between the SCP's discovery in this interview, Dash A had answered questions sparingly. <laughs> Often seemingly quite I'm sorry, I thought about taking a bite, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> take a bite, Go ahead, Walter. Take a bite, Walter. How did I say it again? I don't even remember. Take a bite, like, Walter. Ahead, take another bite, Walter. He's <laughs> trying this catchphrase. <laughs> Often seemingly cautious and uncertain around armed soldiers and guns. I just imagine a version of that way. He's really into like the KFC sort of like gimmick, even as like a drunk kingpin. It's like slowly sliding the bucket across the table. He's like oh, talking to Hector, but he's like eating a chicken drumstick at the same time. Like <laughs> a bite, Hector. Honestly, every time a Los Pollos Hermanos scene came up, I just wanted to eat fried chicken. I know, it, it looks really good. I would it go does. to the last point of okay. Dr. Ostrovic yeah. conversed with the SCP A by herself, with only a recording device in the room. And what did the SCP say, Darnell? Marvelous. And you can use this to hear what I've said later. Yes, of course. Listen. Hold on. I thought it was established that this dude, like, knows what's up in the world. Has he He's got, like, know, vague like, like, a... cryptic prophecies, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Down later, once we have time to review the recording. That way I don't have to spend all our time scratching notes or bringing someone with me to do it. That is very impressive. I wondered when you would want to talk. Not casually, but talking like we are now. You want to know the truth. What do you mean? You're seekers of knowledge, aren't you? You remind me of my brother, I think. 
He was a scholar, maybe the greatest of our age. He could sit across the table from a person and gather everything he ever needed to know about them from a look. BBC Sherlock. <laughs> Like him. <laughs> the fucking the words everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that fucking stun lock me. <laughs> like him, you've wondered why you get the lingering feeling that you are at the center of something much larger than yourself. It isn't your fault. How could you know? Those early days are billions of years past, and almost everyone who was there since passed by the silence. But I was there. Billions of years? This is a very one-sided conversation. <laughs> or more. We were young with the world, and with creation itself. We saw the Iron God put the flaming stars in the sky, and the God of Flesh loose the first red drops of blood, splash against the, the earth to give it life. I was a boy when the serpent and its dark brother set the foundations of what is and what is not. And saw the first sun rise when the world began to turn. I like that implication that 3000 is related to the serpent's hand. Yeah. Serpent. That's kind of cool. Like the fucking can't. Uh, what are those two guys in, in Dark Souls 1? Um, uh, from King Seeker Frampton. Yeah, Frampton Cough. <laughs> the, the, the fucking, <laughs> your scuba diver goes down and he's like, Would you accept the order of this world? <laughs> <laughs> This truth I have for you is not, I think, what you will be expecting. I imagine you will think it is the fanciful ranting of a demented old man. And who could blame you? If you would give me the time, however, I'll tell you how This guy happened. loves his own voice. <laughs> he really does. How what happened? The beginning of all things. The great mystery. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. It doesn't look like anything to me. <laughs> no, no you don't. Nor would you. This place, this city, this is where we were born. This is where all that is, was, and ever will be was realized. You have questions about the city, I understand. You want to know the secrets it keeps, and you want to know about Lancelot. These answers lie within this story, if you would humor me. Go ahead. Sorry, I was trying to give like a dramatic them. pause there. No, no worries. Beautifully delivered. I especially love the part where you apologized for it after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we a good actor them. always apologizes for their choice. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, was that too much? Beautiful. And he's humble. We were few then, in a world of infinite mystery. The haze of creation hung heavily over this planet for such a long time. But in that haze, we learned many great truths. We studied and watched and learned for millions and millions of years. When we had learned what we could, we came here to this place and built this city. We built this city. The city of Autopopodopolis. The first city. Here, right here, at this spot, this is where that which just came. This is where that which is came to be. Is, that is what we called it. You have seen wonders beyond belief, I am sure, but there were only ever true two gods. Is and is not. They are not beings, not ideas. They are truths. There are things that are and things that aren't. When the work of is was completed, the remnant of that truth became the serpent, a being whose purpose is only to study that from whence it came and learn those lost truths about itself. The other, is not, was a shadow of is. The two cannot exist without each other. Is not encompasses is. It is the long nothing that stretches out beyond the world and further. Together, they are the truest knowledge there is. Everything that ever was or was not, all at once. When those truths were first realized, this world came into being. The serpents? The god they worship in the Wanderer's Library? I've read the wiki. Oh my, oh my god, this fucking... Jesus. Oh my god, it's longer every time. The very same. You yes, see indeed. <laughs> I am a fucked up little man. <laughs> doing this whole... Imagine doing the whole battle in like a fucked up little Dark Souls voice. Patches. 
Oh, you're going to order Papadopoulos, are you? You're not some sort of cleric, are you? Have a nice fall. Kicks you off the side. I've got a bit of a hint for you. There's an anomaly behind this door. I'm sure you could contain it. (laughs) There were monsters and demons, but they were the monsters and demons of this world. You have no doubt encountered many of them. Other worlds, those that run with and against our own, were kept apart and far away. We could dream of them, but never reach them. They were forever resigned to the minds and dreams of men. The strange folk in the West were the first to open their eyes upon the cosmos. They are not born from the earth like you or I. They were made from the last glittering fragments of is, and they, more than any other, were attuned to the will of creation. They kept to the woodlands and wrote the first songs, and though we were a world apart, we heard them singing. We came next, my brothers and I and the first men to see with their own eyes the world they had been born into. The mothers of the world cared for us in our infancy. The wolf, the bear, the sow, the lion. As we grew, we learned and gave ourselves names. We wandered the world, marveling at its mysteries and reveling in the life we had been given. There was no greater serenity than what we felt in those early days. Impossibly powerful women and men walk the streets. Of the Hell yes. I love women. Hell yes. Powerful women. Hashtag, did you think... This guy is not afraid of power. Guys? I, 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 I had a look. I was disturbed by how many people not only didn't thank women for their service, but thank themselves. And we'll get to that later. Yeah. Pissed me off. Yeah. Well, there's going to be words in a certain editing chat is all I'll say. By the way, the password for this week is 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 not... You have to type it like that. Is, is not. Shouldn't. That's me. I'm the third. <laughs> shouldn't. What Myself is? Myself and my brother. That's that's us. We're should and shouldn't. <laughs> Myself and my brothers. The man with eyes of wonder. The king with the scarlet cloak. The serpent and his brother. The dragons and lords of the sky. The envoy from Saturn. And so many other classic articles you may or may not recognize. Even Bubble the Cloud was there. <laughs> the king, king of but, well, I, I know everyone, everyone else has like titles. It's just like Bubble the Cloud. Well, the clown is his title. No, he just no, 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 it's just by full name. Like even Bubble the Cloud was there. Hold on, can we get a death battle of Bobble the Clown versus um, Rat Battle? Looming the Clown of the Supremacy. Um, Bubble the Clown would win because he is an entity. So true. The god of iron and the god of flesh took counsel in these halls, and the king of dreams kept his watch in the night. But the greatest of them all was the first king of men. I gotta be honest. Yeah. I like the direction of this article. It's very info-dump. I think it has cool ideas. It's very info-dump heavy. Um, And I think it benefits a lot from when you're more familiar with the wiki. I'm not saying it's bad by any means. I fuck far from me to judge Cactus writing of all people, but... um, I do feel like there was might have been a better way to handle this one than this enormous exposition dump in the last addendum and everything just building up to this exposition dump. Uh, let me continue. <clears throat> he was called Asim, and he was golden and beautiful. I think it's a Sam. Hand. Actually, I think it's a Sam. <laughs> he was called a Sam, and he was golden and beautiful. With his hands, he could build mountains. With his feet, he could cross the wide plains. His voice, he could call the sea. To Tell me him. more about his feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thought the other person was conversing. She like suddenly looks at that feet. Back, his so hands over. Me. He's talking to fucking Saul. Oh my god! I think I'll need a lawyer. His laughter was light and powerful. Like the whisper of a thunder. I'm here for you, Otto Papadopoulos. Did you know you have rights? No. Do they? I mean, it's only one guy. The gods say you do. And he carried a lance they say could kill gods. Ooh, sorry, Saul. Damn. He saw with eyes that kill Phil. past the heavens. He saw with eyes that peered past the heavens. 
into the worlds beyond. We called him a Sem because the word meant is, and we believed he was the joy of creation given form. But within him grew the first vice, envy. He looked to the skies and wished them to be his. Even while we built this city, the first and greatest city of man, he longed for more. His reach extended to creation itself, and he was the first to push past the order of the cosmos and take something from another They've world. They've never described his clothes. Is his cock and balls out behind this cactus? Yeah, come on, cactus. Come on, tell us what you tell, tell us if you've got a little number on or not. Either way, I'm happy. It was a. <laughs> but, it was a crown. He took it from another world, another existence, and declared himself the king of all that is. On this spot, the place where is had come to be realized, he built his seat of power. Oh, is is dead? Or is is that is not? That's dead. Well, they both they don't exist anymore. They, like, turn themselves into the universe, basically, I guess. Then what the fuck's the big thing on the building? We'll, we'll find out more, I assume. We're, we're not even halfway through the story. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't do this anymore. <laughs> you have to. You, the coin toss demands. <sighs> he was kind and beautiful still. Okay, I'm going to be merciful. After I say, all right, continue, I can take over his body. <laughs> How much more is there? There's like another big chunk. Oh, fuck this. Maybe we should have done a part it's two. It's too late now. I can't believe I judged you. Oh, God, I'm, I'm getting exhausted. But, okay, like I said, I'll take over his body after this next bit. He became paralyzed by this desire, incapable of thinking of anything more than the great cosmos that he demanded answer to his beck and call. You were right. This is a fanciful story. I warned you. Do not fear. Oh, the answers you want are coming. All in good time. I need oh. to talk more. I'm sorry, uh, was it your turn to talk, Ostrovich? It's my turn. All right, continue. <laughs> and my spirit leaves the body and goes into your body. <laughs> Like a ghost fires out. It's like Foundation! The, it's, it's, like, it's like the fucking exorcist. No, it's grim. It's horrifying. His limbs like bending the wrong way. My god, this is so long, Tan. The first so betrayal long. came from his sons. The middle son... Popcorn. No, I'm kidding. The middle son <laughs> envied his father's crown and demanded it back to him. We should have fucking invited Cactus on and made him read this horse shit. <laughs> He said it. He raised an army and savaged his father's lands, laying waste to the world of men by the sword and the torch, but he was struck down by a sem and locked in a stone tomb deep beneath the earth. We know him, don't we, Darnell? Does he remember? Uh, um, <laughs> is that the guy we, that got fucked? We saw the Garden of Eden earlier. Who could the sun be? Well, yeah, the Gate Guardian. Adam? Gate Guardian's the sun? Well, no, Gate Guardian's like the angel outside the Garden of Eden. Adam? Who do we know, biblical, SCP-wise, who's in a big stone box? Maybe an, an angry Abel? man? Abel. Abel? It's him. It's Abel. The eldest son spoke passionately to the people of that world, calling upon sense and reason to demand his father pass the crown to him. The kingdom bent their knee to the eldest son and worshipped him as their god, but Assem cursed him to poison the land and his followers. He was exiled, forced to wander the desolate places of the world until the sun went down in the east. Cain! Cain, please! Cain! What are you doing? Why are you wandering the desolate places of the world? Can't, can't I have to, Skipper. <laughs> he did the April space, he shot Abel in the back, and Abel wasn't <laughs> expecting it. Well, I guess in this version, Adam actually just, like, didn't he fucked them both over. Finally, the last son came into his father's room while he slept and took the crown from his head. It was the greatest betrayal, for the father loved no living thing more than his youngest. Pauses. This implies that he has not yet paused this entire monologue. <laughs> he was going. The <laughs> rap god. <laughs> the youngest son slipped away into the night as his father's kingdom fell into ruin, and as Assem turned the world into a smoking waste, we disappeared into the shadows. 
those few who followed the youngest son. Oh my god, so fucking much. <laughs> we fled. Yeah, is there like a TLDR we can do? No. I don't know how much more I can do with no. this. No, I can, I can do it. Me in. Give me some like My Hero Academia. Let me go plus ultra. <laughs> you know, you mean can you voice my like anime friends who are like supporting me? After like, it was like I'm like on one knee, but you're like behind me cheering. The waitress is like doing the anime run as the camera pans around out of the tower. She's like, "Tan Pony, I <laughs> believe in you." <laughs> I need more friends. You gotta voice them all, please. I need like <laughs> a fucking a, a, a big dude comes out of like the top of the tower and he's like, "Oh, heard you could use a hand." Wait, no, no, we're um, like my rival because like you're not so weak, Tanani. Don't you dare die. <laughs> Next, you see um, the the eagle slash the new Captain America running next to you. He goes, eh, on your left. Like, Old <laughs> portals are open and all the <laughs> discovering SCP jokes are coming out. The bird that's going to eat the whole world, everyone. Uh, yeah, he's like, Rawr, you can do it, Dad! <laughs> da, 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 the bowler. is like, hey, I edited you some more stamp. A bowling ball goes yeah. past me, hits the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic joke is here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking polar. Catholic joke is like, give a hand. I've got your back, old friend. Communion wafer. <laughs> cross behind his back. <laughs> what are our other fucking bits? I can't remember. I don't know. I saw that we had like three jokes this whole podcast. Oh my god. <laughs> we we fled into the night for a thousand years, hunted by a seven, his two eldest sons. They desired nothing more than the crown, and would turn the heavens and earth to find it. It was hidden, kept away from them, until they faded into legend and then into myth. When I finally stepped back into the light of day, the world had changed again. The fields were lush, the forests full, and the skies clear. Those who had fled with me had started families, and their families spread across this new world. Those who have written about this place called it Old Europe, the first true kingdom of mortal men. I came into the realm. I don't of... like this idea that that um, the world was started in Europe. Messed up. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like Europe very much. Old Britain. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the first country. I came into the realm of Harrian, a kindly man with a passion for knowledge and a desire to learn. He and his family were gentle and good, and every day more families flocked to his lands. Harrian and I spent many long hours speaking about the times before the darkness, about the strange wonders I had seen across the world. His sons took counsel with me, each of them as strong as noble as last. So I crowned him with the iron crown of my father, and called him Apollyon, the king over the darkness. He built his great halls and his great temples and libraries, and in time all of old Europe kneeled to the high king. When Harrian passed and his crown came to his son Uvan, I took my leave and returned to the east, to the city, to the city of my fathers and my brothers. For the first time in 10,000 years I could rest, and I did. When I awoke, the world had changed again. The Bloodmancers of the East, the Deva, and their mad King Moros, the Accursed. Dark Souls, that's name. How would, what build would you use to fight the mad King Moros, the Accursed? I would have Curse Resist, first of all, obviously, because he would fucking spam Curse. What about when he gets um, the Mermaid I, Tail from Phase 2? I would probably use... Uh, I would use lightning resin, I think, to counter that, since he'd be weak to electric damage. When you were, like, doing the Bigfoot facility dungeon, did you find the seal of um, uh, Moros? Because you can, like, stun him for a couple of seconds with that. I did not know about that, but also that kind of sounds like casual bait. You, you have to get it before you fight the big footprints. Didn't remember? I love how like I never used the shackle of like Moog to like get uh, Margot or whatever or Margot shackle. Sorry, I was like that's casual shit. But when we fought Moog, I was like oh, use the special spell. <laughs> use the special vial exactly for his spell. Well, otherwise you just fucking... you just die. <laughs> so... you, get owned. you get fucking owned. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this oh, honor and this suicide. Yeah, Musazi <laughs> would disapprove. They'd be like, you can't withstand it with your own strength. No, no, Muzazi would be like, ah, clever preparation is another form of conquest. Or might or whatever. The house of Apollyon, the friend of the house of my friend Harrion, had taken to calling themselves the Sky Kings, and were pillaging and conquering every settlement and minor <laughs> lordship across the continents. In the West, rumours abounded that another race had come with the dark forest in strength, one older even than men and with women with weapons. No. With weapons. <laughs> even with women. <laughs> they even had Bitches! Oh shit, they had bitches! They had bitches, not Autopopadopolis, but they had... no fucking match. Me walking into Autopopadopolis, like, where the bitches at? 
<laughs> One older even than men, and with weapons built from the trees and roots themselves. War had come to this world. These ruins, these are the ones you find and cannot explain. They are old, and their meaning has long since been lost. But these wars lay the foundation of the world to come. And war, okay. war never changes. I I hope I'm not just being ignorant, but I'm not the only one who finds this like incredibly boring to read, right? I'm oh losing it. There's so, so much more. Oh my god, I thought I was almost done. Um, <laughs> Can you just TLDR it? I, I don't think we were made for this. But there's more, there's more though. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. I work in a call center every day. <laughs> I read through the terms conditions for BT Broadband and Landline. <laughs> And I've become very good at reading things very fast. So, shall I show you what I'm made of? I don't know how, how good that'll be for listeners, but it might be good for our sanity. Just slow down the video if you want to know what I'm saying. Yeah, you have... uh, you'll have to go in YouTube and switch it to 0.75 times. Darnell, you have a line, and then I'll get started. <laughs> there have been, yes, ruins. Things in the dirt we could not explain. Old things. Things we assume we would find answers for, eventually. Is that right? Isn't that interesting? I hid myself in the ruined halls of my father, but it's not long before the Sky Kings found me. Zorus was his name, and he raised an army to march on Papadopoulos and demand I give him my father's lance. Even if I'd wanted to, I could not, though I did not want to, because the weapon had been lost to my father sometime during the Dark Age of the World. When I told him this, Zorus well, and Polly on the French turned the city over to find it. Um, Lancelot is not been mentioned yet. But he said my father's lance, so... Lancelot does not actually have anything to do with a lance, I'm afraid. Is it missing. Galahad? Which one has it, the lance? There's no... Well, there, there is a lance, but Galahad is not involved. <laughs> Uh, where was I? When I told him the Zoras of Alam threatened to burn the city over to find it. But there's still secrets here. Great truths locked away down... Great truths... Cactus. Locked away down below. And so my grief I called upon the last of the Titans that still walked the earth. The great dragon Barata. Uh, footnotes. The thought to be the figure depicted in the murals in the temple of the sunrise said that. Today ever we raise the city to the sky, forever separating it from the men of the earth. Then I watched. For thousands of years, I watched as king after king came and went, each carrying on the bloody legacy of his line. All of my father's iron crowns sat upon their heads. I watched as the day the hero Gilgamesh laid Cyrus II's only son in single combat on the field of Jerusalem. I saw the dread sorcerer Noah El Moto raise the seas to wash away the lands of men until he was struck down by Maladro the Wrathful. I watched Jory Apollyon watch sail across the sea to meet the king of the night children, watched as she was buried alive to feed the heart of the horrible goddess tree. I watched and I waited and the world turned. Then, when Cyrus the Eighth crossed the Atlantic to bring her into the last of the strange folk, and when his son Cyrus IX brought the great profanities of those people upon his kingdom when he buried the princess. That's, uh, Cyrus the Ninth, buddy. Thank you. I watched with deep sadness as the kingdom of men faltered and Cyrus suffered his four betrayals. His knights bent their knees to foul gods and became monsters and beasts. Uh, Lahaya went to the uh, west, Ogier north, head to the south, and to the east came Lancelot, who had sat by his king's side. In time, he found his way here to the city of my father. Your line. I can. I can appreciate, right, that there's a lot of lore to what Cat. Well, it feels like I am reading a Wikipedia hawk about the lore. I'm sorry, Cactus. Exactly, Don't kill exactly. Me. Like, I appreciate that there's a lot of lore, and I think Cactus is really great at world building, but the thing is, you can world build. World the presentation build, is gets a bit yes. messy here. The presentation's one, but also world building has to, at some point, be in service to a plot. All this, so far, a lot of these articles feel like just a very long process of uncovering a mythos rather than an active plot. Now, one he did really good on with plot was, remember that one the GOC had that was like a lady that burst out and she was like, like it was like a fey queen or something? Yeah. Like that was interesting. There was something happening. But this, I just feel like I'm reading, like you said, a Wikipedia article of a fantasy world and it's like grinding me to a halt. Um, it's it's not as interesting as I think it could be if there was some active element here that the foundation was working on or with instead of just having the flying city explain to them. You know what I mean? Mm. I like I, I don't want to shit on because obviously a lot of people like this and you know Cactus is our friend and a great writer, but I just feel like this is a lot of wasted potential and it's just like it feels like a chore to read this at this point. Like, maybe if we had read all these cross-linked articles and we knew more about the canon, this would be a really big payoff to something, but as a standalone article, it just frustrates me. Because I just feel like I'm trying to fucking keep track of a bunch of names I don't know. <sighs> uh, for no real reason, you know what I mean? I get what you mean. You have a line. Yes, I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned I was trying to buy you some time to rest. I don't also need rest. Get my thoughts. You mentioned that name before, Lancelot. From the tales of King Arthur. In time, the betrayals of the knights fell into legends, and then it's less than that. Eventually, I'll remember four names, and those names were adopted into other stories. Ah, uh, there may have been a bad. <laughs> <laughs>
That's the best part so far. Uh, there may have been a man who sat at the round table, but it was not this man. This man was the being they could come to call the Demon Lancelots. That is the fellow oh creature. Oh my god, this sounds like some shit you would make up. <laughs> that, is the fellow Demon creature. Lancelot. that is the fellow creature you saw there sprawl across the ruins of my brother's temple. Lancelot would have turned the city to a ruin, but the last of our allies came to Aldropopolis' defence. For weeks, the Demon Lancelot fought the old dragon Barata, the Sea Lord Arcfrus, the hero Beowulf, and Relevine, the Deva King. These are the last of the great heroes, long since forgotten and passed out of memory. The battle cost them each their lives until only myself and the dragon remained. When Fanold Gas brought out a tour that Lancelot's fetid heart and cast his ruined form across the temple of sunsets. Barati God, I was alone. All I remained were my brothers, roaming the earth in search of our father's crown. I suppose my father is out there somewhere as well, if he is not rotting in the heart of the earth. The crown is lost, followed home on the profane dark to Saros Ix into his moor. The house of Polyus went ended in night, when the last king of old Europe was scattered, and the children of the night crossed the seas in their long dread ships and dug what they could from the world of men and carried about to the dark holes on the edge of the world. Time passes now, we here we are. You have questions. You mentioned knights. What are, I, that's your question of <laughs> yeah. all the things? You know. Like, what you, are knights? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's a boat? <laughs> they were nobles sworn to the House of Polyon. Ogier was the first to bend his knee, and then Lancelot, Lahaya, and Hector. They swore their lives to the king, but when the strange folks provided his road out of ground, their hearts were turned. For the betrayal, they were cursed by the Cyrus, and they took strange and grotesque shapes, the shapes of old fey gods. Lancelot was the depth of a mace, and so his arms were transformed. His mind was able to do anything but rage and destroy. The sound he made as he was coming across the mountain was like a great legion of feral hogs. That's uh, a screaming pig. I know what I said. I don't understand. Can you rephrase this next one so it's like that force one trailer? <laughs> <laughs> so let me get this straight. So, so let me get this straight. We're not somewhere I'd call ancient Greece. There's freaking dragons and demons, and uh, oh yeah, there's a giant invisible body laying across the temple. You realize how ridiculous this all sounds, don't you? I do. I would just trust you for you believe me without reservation. But I've kept much of the old world hidden for these many young years. As my life is mine, so is my ability to keep it hidden. I can see La Haye moving unseen in the west, and Hector is preparing to emerge in the south. Lancelot has laid here dead these many years, and yet he does not grow cold. Why? They say the profane adamant has been seen again in the skies, and the profane adamant was who Lamont Lancelot prayed to for strength overwhelming. Something is moving here, something that has been lying dormant for many long eons, and so I require your age. We will call the mortal, and while I live for an impossibly long time, I will not live forever. The strangeness of sitting in city drains me, and the day will come when it must be passed to you, the sons of of men. You'll have to guard these secrets. You've mentioned that several times. Secrets? What secrets? Where? Is there secrets in the room with us? <laughs> in the old library, pause. I was not exaggerating when I told you. This place is where Is was realized. This is where Is came to be. My father built a seat of power of the place where the greatest authority of all authorities came to rest at the beginning of all things. We call that place the old library, and within it is the first book. Haha. Uh, it's not truly a book, but. <laughs> I can't get past that. <laughs> I'm so sorry for telling you that we didn't need to do a second part. I fun. did not realize. I knew, I I'm knew sorry. it. It's not truly a book, but that is maybe the easiest way to describe it. You spoke of the Serpent's Library earlier. That is the greatest collection of knowledge in the entire cosmos. It's grown across space and time, across dimensions, across realities. The text in this whole describe is and all that is. The first book does not describe is, it is. It holds the most fundamental truths. Those never intended to be understood by man or beast. How? Why? Those are more. In truth, I have tried and failed to read that book and know these truths. I believe that once I could, I could write the wrongs of this world, but I was a confused child and knew nothing. I nearly lost myself once in the other book, and in it I grew old. The other book? There are two books in the old library. The first book and the other book. The other book is the book of is not. It too contains truths. Truths of things that cannot be. Truths that do not exist. Dark truths. All truths. My sorcery protects the old library now, but a day will come when it finally fails. There are those who will know what is here and would seek to find it. This is a lot of information. I don't think I'll be able to believe it all. I understand. Pause. When Cyrus buried the last prince of the strange folk, she cursed him in three great profanities, restricted to adamant and dark. Watch for these three. They are the last remnants of the cursed people, a people who fled from the children of the sun and the iron swords, and the children of the night and their fell sides. When you see the terrors, remember what I said here. The ancient from a long time before your history begins. Watch for them and see. Uh, who are you? Pause. My name was Seth, brother to Cain and Abel, <laughs> son of Adam LSM, the first king of men. Was? I I'm sorry, I... No, it's all right. Pause. I was a boy when I gazed into the night sky of a young universe and asked my father for a star all my own. He reached out and pulled for me an iron crown, and that crown seeded the foulness that lingers in the hearts of men. It drove my father to madness, my brothers to butchery, and led to the ruination of our kingdom. Without that crown, Sarif the Eighth may not have crossed the sea. Without the crown, Harian's lineage may be have been able to fight off the children of the knights when they came across the sea. There is no more hateful thing, no greater abhorrence than that crown. It is the seed of the root of evil, and it was a gift to me. No, I was once Seth. I have lost my name. 
So I'm guessing the crown is sort of like a the ring esque artifact yeah. of power that corrupts. Very interesting. And with All that, right. we've reached well, the end of it. <laughs> and then I, the I gave my my thoughts on this. Where like I'm sure this would be more of a hard hitting thing if I was more familiar with the overall fantasy canon um, Cactus was building or some of these articles. But I think it's, like, I already discussed most of my thoughts. It leans too much mm-hmm. into exposition. And I feel like at some point your world building has to be in service to something actually happening. Um, which I don't really get with this article. I feel like this is just, the whole article builds up like, oh, here's all this shit you don't know. But then rather than leading it to us to, like, create theories, it's like, all right, here's what all this shit is now, by the way. And the, at the very end in this very long exposition. Do you think I'm so good at reading terms and conditions? <laughs> Can you write? I think you're good at reading fast, but you did slip a few times in a way that I don't think even slowed down people will be able to. But for the time you bought us, I would say word. Okay. Um, uh, I would give this one a mid rating. I think. Um, please don't kill me, cactus. You know I think highly of you, but I just I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't hate this one, but I'm not really a fan of it. I think I think it had so much potential, but was basically just used as an enormous info dump on this sort of canon he's building. What about you? Um, I, I like the world building. I gotta say, I probably like the whole of it rather than this individual article. I like some. Yeah. Of, like this is yeah. this feels to me like a setting description, basically in my mind. Mm-hmm. And then this from here, we go to like the bits I find interesting personally. So it serves a purpose in I've my mind. But it's not by no means my favorite, but I do like it. Because there are other things in this sort of setting slash Kenny's built that I do really enjoy. Like I remember enjoying that like what was that like garden not garden you know the one we read at the same time we read the bright proposal that like there were like all these domes and prisons and i really like titania's prison yes and i really like that other one we read about like that that uh the fey queen who was like cursing people and the goc had them all that stuff i like that stuff all right well um i guess we do some comment readings now huh uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's get into them. I'm, I'm still sort of drained. Thank I've me, got this. It, can you can it, password for this week? Thank me for my service because you never fucking do any of you commenters. For a lot of people, thank you all the time. Actually, Not in the comments constantly, sometimes undeserved. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I mean, um, thank you for your service, Tan Honey. Hmm. Awkward. Uh, three yellow arrows, aka Crocat, says Ben Franklin fucked a lot. I think so. That or Thomas Jefferson. I I I mix up all the founding fathers. Who fucking cares? They're all dead. Uh, one of those two fucked a lot, though. I know yeah. that for sure because it, it was made very clear to me by my history teacher in high school for some reason <clears throat> that one of them. Got they all mad they zapped an elephant. Me. Messed up. <laughs> yeah, that's Thomas Edison. I think and they all did it. <laughs> they, they, they were all the. It's like it's like fucking Kill Bill when they all gang up to betray her. Yeah. They all zapping an elephant. <laughs> Shay Thalia says interesting thumbnail. I didn't even see what's the thumbnail. It's Hamilton's thumb. He doesn't even look at Hamilton's thumbnails. Uh, I was asleep and, until I got yelled at for not putting it on. Uh, there it is. I see it. Oh, funny peanut. This guy, he can, he can, <laughs> like, shortly before I posted that, you were in my DMs saying, and I quote, like, 1am, can you, rec- can you record fire and electricity? I was in the car when I was typing this. <laughs> I was, I thought you wanted me to, like, record sounds of that for the podcast. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> space it was important for my i was getting struck by a by it was a, like i was like looking at like what did he mean by this uh should I this is interesting thumbnail first password sorry i don't have a splatoon oc so i guess you'll have to turn me into a squid now and then some spark you're a, you're a squid now uh oh no mom and dad are arguing about math i'm gonna i saw uh, i did read ahead password. these comments and i'm gonna say darnell i feel bad because apparently people do not approve of my decisions because they're questioning me much like about what well, I'm going to say, I'll say, I'll give you my thing at the end. You can read on first, though. Hey, thank you, Anomalous, for your service. Did I do something wrong? Is no, 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 you, no, 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 no. We'll discuss this at the end of, uh, end of the uh, episode. Like, after we're done recording? No, 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 no. We'll want it to record oh, it. okay. We'll want to record so this. So, says, Splat and OC, do not steal. 
Their name is Dragon Hadrian. They are a super badass smart person with memory and blue electricity powers. They love respecting women and anomalous. They are also secretly possessed by a demon and they kill people. Anyway, that's my OC. Do not steal. Thank what color paint do they shoot? <laughs> women, what, 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 how, what, uh, are they groovy? Women, like, where's the Splatoon? Uh, Hamilton can help him out. Hamilton says Platoon OC loves the color blue and is the color blue and not any other color. I love blue. <laughs> Thank you, Hamilton. Good job. <laughs> Insert clever name here says, oh wow, the traditional and very much not bullshit 121 episode special. I can't believe they finally read 087 the stairwell and nothing else. So, PogChamp epic style swag money. Uh, password one Splatoon OC. I don't know if it's like a, a squid child with purple hair, and also they shoot ink from a little gun thing onto others. I also have uh, another password. Seeking green light, crit. Welcome. I have another and new password. Said, okay. Um, so we had the Splatoon OC disaster. Next time, I want your squid game OC. <laughs> Tell me what they're in debt for. Yes. <laughs> uh, password two woman thinking. Thanks at all women. Smile. Comedy man Kelp says. All right, guys, here's my Splatoon OC. This is my character. Do not steal. Adult human male, age unclear, but probably in his 40s somewhere, has brown hair and is somewhat overweight, wears glasses, a white button-up shirt, and green pants. Wow, just making Don out. three kids and a talking dog, <laughs> works at a local brewery, frequently goes to his local bar to hang out with his three friends who are a pervert, a black man, and a guy in a wheelchair, always brings up weird things that happen to him mid-conversation, Fights an anthropomorphic chicken man. What do you guys think of this one? I'd say there's potential. Peter Griffin works in a brewery? I didn't know that. I thought he worked at a toy factory or some shit. What? <laughs> toy factory? That's even weirder. I uh, was <laughs> imagining like putting a chapter in the box that being a family, a fucking family guy episode where he worked at a toy factory or something. <laughs> toy factory? <laughs> Quaker button those words. He's ways, like Gepetto. <laughs> making puppets he's really yeah. serious about it too there's no comedy during those scenes Lois I'm trying to make him a real boy Quaker button those 128 says I haven't watched a your turn to die playthrough but I love wolf meow guy edit thank you for your service anomalous a salute thanks for the love wolf I'm really thankful for it meow <laughs> I miss him so much what was his name again Jin. We said this exact conversation yes. last time. Jin. I miss Jin. It's probably Gin, actually, but I like Jin better. An anomalous writer says, throw back to F1. Let's go. To think F1 be 896 days ago, smile. Also, password one, please give me your Splatoon OCs in the comments. Also, password two, I thank myself for the service. Uh, Guari SCP says, the episode came sooner than expected. I love how Darnell thinks he isn't an SCP newbie anymore. <laughs> Keep up that positivity, champ. Fuck you. <laughs> Originally, I wasn't that interested in the premise of this episode, but the comments. Warren, you didn't like the cheer special? Darnell even predicted many articles. I'm glad you liked the commentary, at least, Quarry. I, I want to read JT this is a comment. I'm pissed off. I don't think he's pissed off at all, but it's just funnier. What a fucking thumbnail! I love this premise of going back to the first episode, plus the grade A funnies from the boys. But maybe another tw 120 more episodes before Dornail isn't an SCP newbie. Ironically, finding this podcast and encouraging me to dive deeper into SCP also made me realize how much of an SCP newbie I am, too. Hot take, I kind of prefer the 13 out of 10 system over shit middle good. Makes sense. And it shows a better sense about how much Darnell locked the SCP. Damn. Continue. This is a turning point. Where Continue the we comment. go back to 13 out of 10. Continue the comment. Oh, also, the quantum mention reminds me that you guys haven't finished Anti-Memetics Division. Wait, we didn't? No, there's another half of it. Well, can we read it? Because that's like... Next the time! On the wiki. I haven't finished Anti-Memetics Division. Hope you guys get on to that soon. Smile. I don't have a Splatoon OC, so I'll share my Aetheral Space OC, making effort as up as I go. We started and off as like a Boston accent, and now he's like British. 
You're a drake shit. He's a cousin that grew up in the slums of planet I can't think of yet. This is what turns the AS all This guy's part of Peaky Fucking Blinders. He found it the quickest way to make money and leave his planet through his underground eight of books and rings. He then uses his Kogi brain. I love Kogi. Can we yeah. make that like an in terms of like Kogitans? <laughs> Kogi. Yeah. It's like me and my Kogi buddies. Kogi brain to quickly learn books and in real time analyze his opponent's moves and dodge them. His eighth ability is called Bad Connection, where he can lag his moves to mess up his opponent's block timing <laughs> or short range teleport. He can also rewind his state to a previous teleport. Hand in case he takes fatal damage like he's on hard pain. Mostly in sport, fighting games against Hi, people Peng. like 12 frame delay. And his robot arms are so modern though, sounds cool. This Hello. episode cheered me up a lot, especially after my weekend duty. Thanks, guys, and thanks, Anomalous. What about women? Wow. Also, Crowcat says the 13 out of 10 system was infinitely better, but we can't have good things because Tannoni's scared of it the same way Lovecraft was scared of air conditioners. So, here, as I said, this is where my, my little old branch to you. If you want, we can go back to the 13 out of 10 system. I'll accept it. I miss it. I miss it because I liked it. The fans liked it. It made but, sense. But you, however, but the only two people who hated it were you and Sumerian. And Sumerian has never won. However, on, uh, on I have team. some terms. You can't say 13 out of 10. You can say 10 out of 10 and then three bonus stars. That will no. satisfy. What do you know? What's so because, bad about what, that? What, because it also goes down. I can subtract stars. I can't go 10 out of 10 and negative three bonus stars. What do you mean you can subtract them? What I've subtracted mean? before. There are articles where my personal... Why the so negative bonus stars? Yeah, that was relevant when no! we were... Fine. Fine, you can have, do whatever the fuck you want. 13 out of 10. I don't know who fucking cares anymore. This is this is like the boys where everything's decided by who's got more points in the running right now. <laughs> You've broken and me. You can do whatever the what are your fucking ratings. Like a million out of ten. Is... Who cares? Sixty three percent of viewers are excited to see Darnell on the big screen. Thirty two percent of viewers. Stan, I need to talk. For what is it happening? <laughs> What's this? What, this what, you're changing the rating system? Of course. <laughs> no, no, I requested it specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start the show. Uh, Not according to the ratings. Guess what, guys? The rating system's finally back, and it's thanks to your voice. Hear that? Voting does matter, and work. <laughs> Why am I homelander in this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> you played yourself. All right. Well, that was a, a long one, so hopefully no one... Yeah, will I'm about to die. Um, Cactus, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings. I love you, bro. I would love to have you on again soon as well, so you can roast me for my interpretation. Um, but, yeah, I guess everyone take care and have a great day. Go read slash watch Aetheral Space. Bye! Bye!